today on the breakfast. X and the A boss. Olisa Agbakoba writes INEC point at confusion in constitutional provision for election of president will seek to get clarity. Also in the breakfast, Nigeria recorded an annual headline inflation rate of 18.85% in 2022 in what was a remarkable year ravaged by several economic headwinds. Why did we experience the worst inflation in 21 years? And we will review the biggest stories making headlines across national dailies. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. I am Messi Boko. It's good to have you join us this morning on the show. Uh, Messi, how are you doing this morning? Very well. It's a Thursday morning. I don't know, there's something about Thursdays when I think of Lagos. Uh, markets don't open on time. And, uh, you know, there's a bit of less traffic uh, on the roads on Thursdays uh, coming from the mainland. That is uh, because uh, of this so-called sanitation exercise they do around market. Although some people do theirs on Wednesday. But I noticed that sometimes you might want to buy stuff. You'd have to wait till 10 a.m. Just it. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> so I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure you noticed that I'm very surprised at you know, what you said. Oh, you're not a negotiator. You're not used to... Uh, they do environmental on Thursday. Or you've not no, that's that not before. the plan. No, wait, wait. <laughs> so what is so I, I'm now? surprised that you're talking about environmental on Thursday. Yes. And uh, I'm also concerned about uh, yes. the, the fail cues. The Mercy, the fail cues, cues, that one thing. The thing is that I wanted to get water this morning. And you can tell I'm almost sounding a bit groggy. I wanted to get water this morning. I just couldn't get water either because most shops were not open. Uh, speaking of the fuel queues, Mercy, I spent four hours uh, just the other day to get uh, from uh, Victoria Island to the mainland. Leaving Victoria Island took me almost two hours because of fuel queues. Uh, so I'm just wondering why we're talking about sanitation and then I'm wondering Thursdays for sanitation. Fantastic. But Is it to you know, prior to this time, that's uh, the kind of experience that we've had. And um, asking myself, do people still, you know, observe, you know, sanitation every yes. other time? Especially it's now because that they are mandated have to... to do it. That's why they do it. No, no, I'm, I'm not in dispute of that. But okay. I want you to hear me out. Okay, I'm and I hear the point is, uh, we have a lot of persons who are queuing for petrol. Mm -hmm. You know, we wake up before six o'clock mm. at the hour five. You have, you know, um, the queue. Mm. To move on the island, yeah. several filling stations, you have the queue. So at what point, who is going to be observing the sanitation? They still do because, uh, okay, if you live around market areas, uh, you find out that uh, uh, you still, still see lumps of uh, you know, debris brought uh, from uh, the gutters and from um, you know, the drainages. Most of them, they do it on Wednesday. They even still constitute another menace on the road because they still block the roads again and uh, you find that, that you still have to try to circumvent around uh, the roads uh, that's on the one hand but i was just uh, not so happy this morning but i got water i didn't get water you want to oh, give me water I'm I, I do have water yeah it's by my side okay. i'll probably give so you one take a break i think i'll take <laughs> your water as long as it's very very chilled let's go towards trending this morning the president mohammed buhari was in mauritania the other day just two days ago and he uh, received an award for peace and uh, most people are talking about it and um, the president talked some some stuff concerning a religious and um, oh, um, ethnicity like... or religion and uh, ethnicity. Yes. all right uh, so let's see why is it top trending because uh, the president uh, you know be, uh, is believed to be a champion of um, peace in the continent. Let me just give a bit of a background of how that happened. On Tuesday, President Mohammed Buhari, who was in Nokchat, the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, urged leaders uh, to place a premium on youth development with more seriousness and actionable ideas in promoting skills acquisitions while discouraging idleness. Speaking at the African Conference for Peace in 2023, the president said 
The idleness of youth and non-inclusion in discussing issues that shape their lives and the future portends liability for that continent, especially in religious fundamentalism and extremism. The president, who was honored by the Abu Dhabi Peace Forum with the award for strengthening peace in Africa, said there was a need to inculcate values and principles of tolerance and peace in educational institutions and particularly among the youth. Mercy, a lot of things come to my mind right now. The, the president was honored for strengthening peace in Africa. Some people would say uh, we hardly have relative peace here in our own country. It's also interesting to note that, you know, the Forum for Peace was founded in Abu Dhabi in 2015 and it's dedicated to strengthening Islamic narrative of peace building and tolerance in the world of uh, religious pluralism. Uh, that's what it is. So uh, it, it's that's why you have that award. You need to think about that. The reason why you have, uh, you know, this particular foundation, okay? It's, it's a foundation or an organization or association that awarded the president that peace for strengthening peace, you know, in this country. It's an African country. But um, if you also look at the reason why it was, it was established, it was for this particular purpose. And that's why we constantly have all of the conspiracy theories that we have about whether or not, you know, the source of shenanigans uh, for, okay, we need to understand that Nigeria is a secular state. Secular in the sense that you have Christians and you also have Muslims. So it's not entirely an Islamic country. Yes. Then you also need to know that all the African countries are also Islamic. I don't know if you understand. I mean, I beg your pardon. They're Christian nations. So you have Africans that are Christian. So it's, um, it's very, you know, disheartening. Uh, others have called that the ICC should um, you know, be involved in this particular case, what the president would have to answer. It's, it's, it's really, really, you know, a big irony. If you're going to look for an example of an irony, remember in English class, they'll tell you uh, what are the example of irony. So if you're going to, as part of that speech, you want to look for an irony. This is a typical example of it because it's, it's a situation where you begin to ask yourself, how do we get to a point where in Nigeria, we don't have peace? And be, when we talk about peace, the absence of war is not necessarily peace because we don't have the conventional war because people are not having the war just like in Ukraine, which in most cases, uh, experts have said that that's not the conventional war. So because we don't have war, we're not experiencing war like uh, a different country and another country and we're engaging and then, you know, there's a combat. It doesn't mean that we have peace, right? So... It's, 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 uh, I really don't know how to describe this, but it's really, it's really, really saddening that uh, we are grappling with a lot, especially in Nigeria, uh, the issue of uh, insecurity that has affected the economy in a very, very, very massive. huge way, massive way. Uh, you want to talk about bandits, kidnapping, what all sort of, all sort of crime and criminality. Around. We're not saying that prior to 2022 mm. or 2023, We've not had crime and criminality. That has always been the case. We've had it for years. Uh, we've had it for years. But it feels like this is amplified. You know, it's like it's been emboldened. And that's what we're faced with. And here we have a president who has received an award for ensuring peace in a certain African country. And, you know, bravo. Well done. It's, it's, I, don't know, I, I just feel that uh, before you could actually uh, think of uh, doing great, you should be able to put your own house in order mercy you have highlighted all the issues that have plagued us you know in a couple of years you talked about uh, kidnapping insurgency banditry which are on the rise by the day we are not at war the last time we experienced war in this country was between 1967 to 1970 when we had the civil war biafra and uh, nigeria you know fighting as it is internally you know but we are not at peace we, you hear uh, issues in uh, uh, Southern Kaduna, the killings. You hear things uh, in um, um, Agatsu in Bembe State where people were killed. And, uh, you know, most people cannot really travel, you know, through uh, the usual uh, expressway because of a um, scare of being kidnapped, you know, by this bandit. Come down to the southeast, uh, the issue of kidnapping is also very rampant. Uh, I couldn't even travel for Christmas uh, last year. <laughs> but, but, you, but, but apart from the fact that those, I mean, a lot of people traveled. I know a lot of persons but who it, came it, they, outside of the because country. Because it was, I don't know, because to me, if you have to travel, it should be absolutely necessary because I wouldn't put my life in danger, aside from the roads. But people traveled now. People do, I wonder how, I mean, what kind of, um, 
you know, help who you mind or Hercules they are, you know, to have just traveled that way. Let's say I wouldn't have traveled. So, so I know course. that in, in all of this, there's always yes. a, a reportage. There's always, you know, uh, this news that, yeah, the South is, the South is. I feel like there's been over uh, this, the, the insecurity in the South is, please mm. and please. Mm. I'm not saying that we don't have the issue of insecurity in the Southeast, okay. uh, all of these attacks, but I'm saying that in most cases, you know how you're about to tell a story or you're about to give a narration, and there's always an exaggeration. Oh. So some things are usually not as it's been said. You know how you say something, it's not as what it is. Like mm. when you get to paint a picture, that's mm. the reality. But so if I'm about to tell you about a certain experience, trust me, mm. um, it is what has happened, but it's not as... I am, you know, saying it because in the course of giving you the narration and uh, putting it out to you, there's always like, you know, a picture that's painted or a perception that's given and people will begin to think that, hey, you know, you can't step your leg in the South East because if you just move, no, no, that's if you move at age, then... No, that's, no, that's what I'm saying because that's what a lot of people think and that's why... That's what no, I'm you know, because, okay, okay, reason, for instance, I'm from the, you know, a particular senatorial zone in Are you from Olu? Yes! <laughs> so... You can't imagine. You know that's my senatorial zone. Please help Justin. Justin cannot go to his village because of all that. That is not true. We need to help. We need to help Justin. I know I know very well. Oh yeah, that's my story. I'm not from Ogbeni, but I'm from Mbano, and we are from the senatorial zone. So all you is still part of it. We need to help Justin because it's not fair. Totally. I mean, my life. <laughs> so that Justin can go back to the village, you know? We, 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 we are going to sound like I'm relocating to the village. I wish well, you get, get, get married and start a family. You are the one who is saying all of that. <laughs> but my point is, you know, sometimes we have oh, a perception. I, oh, Justin, oh, I understand. There's true. insecurity every, everywhere in the it country. Is, it is bad. Including is bad. Lagos. But, you know, it's not as what it is in other parts of the country where you have yeah, the kidnapping. But not, not to say that, you know, persons are not being kidnapped on their way to work and all of that. You have all of this miscrimes, you know, mm -hmm. this criminal mm -hmm. element mm -hmm. taking advantage of persons and, you know, doing all sorts of things. Write down my own story again in Lagos here. <laughs> I think I, I don't no, have to. No, no, you don't have to. <laughs> Justin, Justin has been through a lot. You know, when you talk about, when you talk about people... And um, there's always a local, you know, street word that they say. Okay, but what if we have seen Shege. Eh? Justin have seen Shege in the Me hands of this criminal Mercy. element. Mercy, Mercy. And, yeah. and in 2023, we pray that, you know, Justin will not see Shege. But quickly, let's move <laughs> on to the next one right here. I can't one. believe you just made it about this. So me, I have seen Shege <laughs> you in have. these Lagos. <laughs> you showed me Shege. You, you have seen Shege. But, but looking at our next uh, top <laughs> trending, uh, the court summons MFLA over mm. 23 million Parry uh, club that uh, Nigerians actually lament and what have you? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's not even part of the conversation. No, Nigerians, Nigerians are lamenting. That's yeah, a Nigerians lamenting. Nigerians lamenting is a different, you know, conversation yes. entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's about a mere feeling. Godwin a mere feeling of the Central Bank of Nigeria. You have to be very precise because mm. you can't go yeah, say oh, Justin of plus. You know, you have to say Justin of where a lot of Justins. You have to be very emphatic right there. So. Uh, he has asked the court, uh, the division of the Court of Appeal, to set aside another of the Federal High Court compelling his appearance in a 53 million judgment debt proceedings. So, uh, yes, that's what it is. And that's, been got, uh, that's gotten a lot of persons and a lot of tongues wagging. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Godwin, I like to call it the Godwin and Mephili saga. He's been in the news recently, Mercy. Lots of summons, uh, security guards um, taking him to the office when he reappeared uh, from the UK to Nigeria. Right now, it's the $53 million Paris Club debt. Mercy, how do we salvage this issue? He has been, uh, he, although the case has been uh, you know, adjourned till March the 20th, you know, the Federal High Court uh, summoned Emifele, uh of the Central Bank, that is, you know, over that particular debt, uh, Paris uh, Club Reform. Now, the presiding judge, Inyang Ikuo, gave the order on October 20, 2022, following an application for garnishing made by Joe Agi, a senior advocate of Nigeria, who is the judgment 
creditor. The court granted the application and ordered the Mayfield to appear in court uh, just um, yesterday. However, at the court session, it was adjourned to March 20th. The background is that the dispute stemmed from an alleged $70 million judgment against Linus International Limited for the lawyer's assistance with the Paris Club uh, reforms. The Mayfield was um, said to have only released $17 million leaving an unpaid balance of $53 million. It has got a lot of people talking on Twitter. Merci. Well, um, it's, it's the situation. It's <laughs> what it is. And uh, none that's in court, you know, um, you can talk about what's in court. Yeah. So it's subjudice. So we definitely allow, you know, the law to take its place. But, you know, one would say that it's not, it's, it's not something that is desirable. You have that... Uh, uh, I mean, it's quite unfortunate that the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria will be involved in all of this. And, but, yeah, you know, it's important. Let's see how that pans out. All right. Uh, the next one is, uh, we talked about where we started the show, the fuel scarcity. This is like the longest in the history of Nigeria. Last year, I remember in 2020, we started with um, fuel scarcity, went on to the issue of um, adulterated fuel or bad fuel as it were, you know, and it was sorted out. There were back and forth blame games here and there, you know, uh, appearances at the National Assembly, all that went under the carpet. Uh, then again, uh, much later from uh, like uh, the later part of um, 2022, we started seeing a resurgence of long uh, queues at uh, several filling stations. Uh, uh, the price of um, PMS uh, was increased and Nigerians have been scampering to get the commodity. It is actually endless. The queues uh, in most um, filling stations in Lagos, you know, have actually searched to the roads and um, causing a whole lot of um, gridlock. Like I said, the other day it took me about four hours just to commute from one part of Lagos to the other, and Nigerians are suffering, they are lamenting, you know, transportation costs have, or has increased, uh, food prices, of course, there's a domino effect when uh, we talk about fuel uh, and fuel scarcity in Nigeria. Merci. So, uh, it, it's unfortunate, let's even talk about Lagos where we are right mm -hmm. here. I mean, if you talk about scarcity and why you have the long queue, this has happened since November, and it's so unfortunate that no one seemed to be saying anything. Right. No one seemed to be saying anything. And uh, I, I don't know if the situation in other parts of the country. Uh, I know some people have talked about the cost of buying petrol, mm. which is not at 180, 175, what have you, or 65 or thereabout. Now, people have to buy petrol at 100 and, uh, I want to beg your pardon, did I say 100? Mm. 260, 250, it's even higher in the 800. Southeast. I had I, my, my sister just got back from the east that two days ago. Uh, most filling stations, although right now most of them are not even selling, the black market rates uh, went as high as um, 415 naira in um, Emo State. So, like I was saying, I mean, it's unfortunate no one's saying anything. It's totally saddening. It feels like uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're just yeah, yeah. in a space, uh, this anarchy and, and there's no control, there's no, there's no order in the system. Because one would actually anticipate that at this point, uh, we probably would have, we probably would have uh, been said, you know, by mm. the minister of petroleum, you know, someone should do something. But there's something that, I, there's something that I, we actually experience and notice, I noticed in okay. Asaba. What's that? Uh, one, of, one of it is that I saw tax men of the tax force Arresting okay, DPR, yeah, DPR. So mm. they were in different villages, especially owned by the NNPC, shutting down, um, you know, the stations. Oh, wow, our arresting persons, you know, okay. if you're selling above a certain uh, a price, price mm. right? But, but, but it's not fair to be very honest. I really don't know how we can say this. The cost of transportation, the cost mm. of leaving has increased, everything has moved. Life has become so brutish, it is oh, becoming so old. short. Life has become, you know, it's like we're in the stone age. It's like we've gone back to the time where we had no government, we had no control, we had no system. And how can people, we live in 2023, people are paying tax, we have a government that we voted for, and no one seems to be bothered, bothered about, you know, the pain and the anguish that the people are going through. Really, because everything that happens has a trickle-down effect, mm -hmm. and it's, it's affecting every other part All of the economy. We can't continue to fold our arms and say that we're a giant of Africa, and in this real sense, we're not even showing it. The people who we elect to represent our interests are not even interested about the people 
There's so much hardship and, you know, suffering. You need to go to the streets and see what's going on. People spend, you know, two hours, three hours for a journey of, you know, how many minutes? Just less, less than 20 minutes. Well, we need to take a break now. And when we return, hopefully we're able to bring you uh, off the press with our guests who will be joining us. This is Kanye Please stay with us.